Chapter 16 Escape from Lustria Hiltrud could feel her heart pounding against her ribs, feeling as though it were trying to hammer its way out of her body. Her lungs felt like they were on fire, and her legs felt like lead. She was certain that every step she took would be the last one, but somehow her fear made her go on. Any hope that the lizardmen would ignore them in favor of tracking down Fangwall had vanished. For hours they heard the reptiles scrambling through the undergrowth, following them just out of eyesight. Sometimes a strange chirp or bark would sound from the trees, rising with a sinister sense of purpose which made Hildred's skin crawl. She knew the sounds were not the idle chatter of monkeys or the cries of birds, but the calls of skin hunters shadowing their prey. Sometimes they would catch a fleeting glimpse of blue-scaled stalkers moving through the trees. Such instances seemed deliberate to Hiltrud, as though the lurking lizardmen were revealing themselves in order to frighten the two humans away from a particular path. In their sorry condition, racked by fever, tired from days of trudging through the sweltering heat, sickened by the abominable rations of the ratmen, the two fugitives didn't answer whatever challenge the skinks were offering. Instead, they turned, trying to find a different way through the jungle. Whatever hope they had of keeping to Fangol's trail was now lost. Forced from the Gracier's path by the encroaching lizardmen, they now made their way almost at random through the rainforest. Hiltrud couldn't escape the idea that the lizardmen were guiding them somewhere, herding them like cattle towards some definite end. It was a thought which made her gag in horror. Memories of Zucoatl and the altar atop the pyramid rising in her mind. The fever of Adelwulf was worse, his movements reduced to a pained stumble. More and more he was forced to lean upon Hildred for support. The courtesan didn't begrudge his weakness, she only hoped that she could find the strength within her to bring both of them through this ordeal safely. That cold, practical side of her which had so dominated her life was only a tiny voice now chiding her for not leaving the sick man behind and taking her chances on her own. She didn't listen to that ugly part of her soul. Adolf did not leave her behind. Even if she felt nothing for him, that alone would be reason enough to stay by his side. The chirps and barks of the skinks rose from the bushes around them once more. There couldn't be many of the reptiles, Hiltrud thought, otherwise the creatures would have already overwhelmed them. Why did they not attack with poisoned arrows or javelins as they had the ratmen? She didn't know that. That there was some sinister meaning in their reluctance to attack was certain. The lizardmen were leading them somewhere. But where? They soon had the answer. Driven onwards by the chirps of the skinks, the two fugitives jogged down the game trail they had been following, mustering such speed as was still left in their bodies. Beyond the limit of her endurance, Hildred collapsed when the trail suddenly opened into a grassy clearing. Some giant of the forest had once stood there until the elements had finally brought it crashing down. Rotten piles of wood showed where the carcass of the tree had collapsed long ago. Now, at the center of the clearing, a green-leafed successor grew. Adolf crashed to the ground beside Hildred. He landed on his broken arm, a pain scream scraping through his clenched teeth. Hildred rolled him onto his back, trying to ease his suffering. A louder shriek boomed across the clearing, a sound at once magnificent and terrible. It was like the roar of steel in a furnace and the groan of a warship upon troubled sea. The sound pulsed through the ears of the two humans, throbbing through their bodies with a sting like electricity. They lifted their heads, Adolf's broken arm forgotten as they focused upon the source of the awful scream. Within the branches of the lonely tree, something moved. They hadn't even noticed the reptile before, so still had it been, its green scales blending into the leaves around it. Now, however, the beast had been aroused. It crept along the thick branch upon which it stood with great crawling hops of its body. Two short, clawed legs let the reptile grip the tree the rest of its body rising in a lurching, hunchback fashion. When the creature reached the edge of the branch, it sat for a moment, studying the two humans with a glazed, hungry cast in its dull yellow eyes. The reptile crouched upon the branch for a time, looming over them like some scaly vulture. Then the folds of its wrinkled body opened wide, snapping into great leathery pinions. 
the winged reptile threw back its beaked head, its warbling shriek again pulsing through the jungle. Swiftly the reptile launched itself from its perch, soaring down from the tree, its eyes fixed upon the prey the skinks had driven to it. As the pterodon took wing, Hildred noticed the patch of scaly blue skin clinging to its back. Only when the blue scales started to move on their own did she realize there was a skink clutching the winged monster's back, riding the flying reptile as a man could ride a horse. The skink bore a long stabbing spear in its claws, and with a deft motion of the weapon it brought the pterodon hurtling even faster upon the two fugitives. Hiltrud cast about her for the golden sword Shater had given her. She rose to her knees, huddling close to Adelwolf, flailing the sword in a desperate arc before them, trying to place a barrier of biting metal between them and the flying reptile. The woman's frantic efforts caused the pterodon to shriek in surprise and rear back from the flashing blade. Its kink rider, however, had more intelligence than the beast. A single expert jab with the spear, and the lizard man tore the sword from Hildred's fingers, sending it flying across the clearing. Hildred's first impulse was to run after the sword, but Adolf grabbed her ankle before she could move, pulling her down before the skink could run her through with the spear. The mercenary rose to his feet, shouting and leaping, waving his hand above his head in an effort to grab the attention of the attackers. Seeing the pterodon fix its eyes on him, he ran across the clearing, intent on drawing the reptiles away from Hiltrud. The pterodon shrieked and dived after the mercenary. Hiltrud could see the skink on its back pull on the bony headcrest jutting from the back of the reptile's head, causing it to veer away from Adolf before it could sink its talons into him. The pterodon croaked and snarled in frustration, but the skink didn't release its headcrest until it was certain it was back under control. By that time, Adolf had drawn his own sword and was bracing himself for the pterodon's second attack. Hildred watched the man trembling with effort, his arms shaking as though with an egg. The pterodon hovered above him, making its grisly croaking sounds, snapping at a skink on its back with its fanged beak. Finally, the pterodon was allowed to dive at the man once more. The spear lashed out again tearing the sword from Adolf's fingers with the same precise, expert twisting motion which had disarmed Hiltrud so effectively. The courtesan cried out, expecting to see the skink impale Adolf with a second thrust of the spear, as he had nearly done to her. Instead, the crest on the skink's neck fluttered open and it shifted a grip on the spear, driving at Adolf with the blunt end of the weapon rather than the jagged tip. Cold horror rushed through Hiltrud's body as she understood the skink's intention. The lizard man wanted to take Adolf alive, to use the flying steed to carry him back to the Temple of the Serpent and the waiting altar. Hildred's cry did not face the skink as it struck out at Adolf with its spear, but the sound was enough to distract the hovering pterodon which shifted position and foiled the lizard man's aim. The jabbing thrust of the spear's blunt end, instead of crashing into Adolf's head and stunning him, instead passed harmlessly over his shoulder. Martial instincts honed in hundreds of battles made Adolf grab the end of the spear without thinking. He pulled at the weapon savagely, ripping it out of the hands of the skink and nearly causing the lizard man to lose its grip on the pterodon's back. Confused and angered by the conflict around it, the pterodon dived back at Adolf. Talons spread for slaughter. The mercenary awkwardly fumbled with the skink's spear, trying to turn it around so he could stab the reptile with the weapon edge. The one-armed man looked up, eyes wide with horror, as he saw the reptile nearly upon him. Hiltrud screamed again, hoping to draw the pterodon away from the helpless saddle wolf. The sound was not as effective as before. Quickly she unslung the pack of skaven provisions she carried. Gripping the rotting bag by its straps, she spun her body around and flung the pack at the winged reptile. The provision splattered across the pterodon's back, covering it in unspeakable bits of wormy meat and rancid fruit. The reptile shrieked in alarm, rising high into the air. Its eyes shifted angrily, studying the clearing and narrowing when they focused upon Hiltrud. Screaming its warbling cry, the pterodon dived towards Hiltrud. Again, the skink rider pulled at the crest of its almost brainless mount. The pterodon hissed in protest, snapping at its master. The skink had nearly turned the beast around when suddenly its body was pierced from behind. 
The barbed head of the spear erupted out of its own chest. The skink released the pterodon and pawed futilely at its mortal wound. The weight of the skink on the end of the spear pulled the weapon from Adolf's hands. The pterodon rose into the air again, the lifeless skink tumbling off its back and crashing to the earth. Adolf rushed to recover the spear before the winged monster could turn on him again. He didn't count upon the single-mindedness of the beast, however. Instead of turning upon him, the pterodon dived straight at Hiltrud. This time there was no guiding intelligence to curb the pterodon's predatory instinct. The reptile came hurtling at Hiltrud like a leathery thunderbolt. Its talons slashed through her soft skin, linking deep into her flesh. Fluttering its wings, its warbling cry all but drowning out Hiltrud's screaming, the pterodon lifted its prey into the sky. Adolf rushed after the fleeing monster, shouting and waving his arm, trying anything to get it to take interest in him again. But the pterodon could not be tricked into releasing the catch. The mercenary could only watch helplessly from the ground as the pterodon settled into the branches of the tallest tree bordering the clearing. He made a desperate cast of the spear at the reptile as it landed, but the shaft fell well short of its target. He looked desperately at the tree, but knew he could never climb it with a broken arm. By then, it was too late. The screams had stopped. Desolate, Adolf stumbled away from the clearing. He no longer cared where his steps took him, only that they took him away from the grotesque slobbering sounds descending from the pterodon's perch as it feasted on its prey. Grazier Fankwall peered through the branches of the mangroves, studying the swamp. He wrinkled his face as the stagnant, sour reek of the place smashed against his senses. The first instinct was to avoid this place, to detour however many leagues were necessary to avoid setting one paw in its slimy ground. That was a luxury he couldn't afford. Chang Fang had come this way. Bonerper's insistence that the assassin's trail led here was proof of that. The Rattover couldn't communicate how long ago Fangwell's enemy had been here, but that didn't really matter. He was still ahead of the Gracier, still well on his way to getting to the ship before Fangwall. Sidestepping the swamp was not an option. There wasn't a time to go around. Fangwall's second instinct was to tuck his tail between his legs and scurry across the bog as quick as his feet could carry him. This too he dismissed with an effort of self-control. There was no way to tell where the decayed zombies might be lurking, waiting for fresh meat to rend with their rotting claws. The undead might be lying in wait under the mud or hidden beneath the scummy water. There was no telling and no way to pick their scent from the rancid stink of the swamp itself. Fankwell squinted as he stared at a crumbling fort the human pirates had built long ago. There was no sign of activity there, but the last time there hadn't been any sign of activity anyway. Not until the festering corpses had lurched out of the ruin to attack the Skaven. The Gracier bruxed his fangs and tugged at his whiskers. Caution was a good thing, but that wouldn't help him if Chang Fang sailed away in the ship. Screwing up his courage, Fangwell dropped down from his perch in the branches of a mangrove tree. He scurried over to Bone Ripper, swatting the rat ogre's flank with his staff and pointing a claw at a swamp. Go quick, he snarled. First lead, I will follow. The rat ogre wrinkled his face in distaste as he turned and drew a lungful of the stagnant swamp air into his lungs. For an ugly moment, Fankwell thought Bone Ripper was going to defy his command. And then the hulking beast body rumbled as a sigh shook through him. With an air of resignation, Bone Ripper loped off into the mud. Fankwell waited a few moments to see if anything rose out of the slime to attack his bodyguard and then quickly scurried after Bone Ripper. He glanced at the scumming water to either side of the bank, unsettled to see cold eyes of the crocodiles watching him with a predatory regard. Fumbling at a clasp, Fankwell thumbed open the little rat skull box that held his snuff. He inhaled a noseful of the warpstone powder, feeling a thrill of warmth and vigor rush in him. The stuff didn't make him like the crocodiles any better but at least his mind found it more difficult to focus on them as a tide of contrasting emotions filtered through his brain. Of course, even the warpstone snuff was not enough to make Fankwall forget about the zombies. Every step closer to the tower, he expected to see the undead rear out of the muck. 
his first encounter with the things had been bad enough. Then again, he didn't have Chang Fang around trying to feed him to the things this time. Fang Kul could be happy about that. Or at least he would be if the assassin's absence didn't mean that he was probably on the ship getting it ready to sail away and maroon the gracier in this lost world of lizards and snakes. Fast quick, Fankel growled, striking Bone Ripper's back to encourage the brute to greater speed. The barks and the chirps of the lizardmen sounded around him once more after Adelwolf fled the clearing. There was a frantic quality to the sounds now. Perhaps the lizardmen were asking each other what they should do now, that he'd killed their chief and their flying monster was only interested in filling its gullet. The mercenary thought about just sitting down and waiting for the skinks to come to him, but he didn't think they would. They were watchers, said to monitor him, to herd him to their masters. Even if the reptiles stood and fought, they would have soon overcome him, though. His thoughts were not about escape now. That idea had died with Hiltrud. Now the only thing that goaded him was the hope of vengeance. He would make the lizardmen suffer. Killing the lower creatures wouldn't hurt the reptiles though, but if he could find the toad creature... Adolf ignored the common sense that told him it was madness to think he could kill the toad creature. If even a man who knew less about wizardry than a street sweeper could sense the aura of magic surrounding that amphibian, then surely it was more than capable of using that magic to protect itself. But he was far beyond reason now. It was something to keep him going. He didn't think finding the toad creature would be a problem. Adolf had noticed the way that the lizardmen seemed hesitant to kill him. Even the skink chieftain on the pterodon had made every effort to keep the animal from hurting the mercenary. The reptiles wanted him alive, to bring him somewhere. He was certain that wherever that was, the toad creature would be there. It would do no good to fall into the claws of the lizardmen though. He had to keep out of their clutches, to force the toad creature to come to him, to meet him on his own terms and on the ground of his own choosing. That was his only hope now, his only hope for revenge. Thrashing sounds in the brush ahead announced a new effort of the skinks to capture him. Adolf sprang behind the cover of a fallen log just as an armored reptile the size of a lion thrust itself from where it had buried itself in the ground. The burrowing monster was a dull brown in color, its body heavy with big thorn-like spikes which covered it from the tip of its snout to the end of its club-like tail. The reptile hissed menacingly at him and shook the earth from its back. Before the razor dawn could lunge at a man, however, a skink came scrambling around its flank, jabbing at it with a short spear. The bigger reptile's fury ebbed, and it only stared at Adelwolf, content now to simply block his way. The ground behind the mercenary now rose up and a second razor dawn emerged, blocking the way back. Like the first reptile, this one too had its entourage of skink tenders. Goading the armored reptiles with their spears, the skinks moved their monster towards Adelwolf, trying to trap the man between the two beasts. Crying out in challenge, Adolf threw the bladder of foul water into the face of the beast behind him. The creature was blinded for an instant, its horned body heaving as it sent spikes shooting out of its skin in every direction. Skinks dropped flat to the earth to avoid the deadly missiles. Already turned to face the first razor dawn, Adolf didn't see the unexpected reaction the one behind him had when the black water splashed in its eyes. Unfamiliar with the creatures of Lustria, his first awareness of the Razordon's ability to throw its spines was when six of them came stabbing into his back. Screaming in pain, it took every last piece of willpower for Adolf to stay on his feet. He reached behind his back, frantically trying to pull the spines out of his flesh. His skin throbbed where the spines had struck him, a stinging burn as though he had backed against a hot stove. A skink rushed at him with a club, but Adolf drove his boot into the lizardman's belly, pitching him onto the ground. The mercenary could see more of the wiry lizardman emerging from the jungle, surrounding him on each side. One of the razor dawn tenders encouraged the beast to shoot a volley of spines into the ground near Adolf. The meaning was clear. He was to stay where he stood. Adolf glared at the skink and spat on the little line of spines. Gritting his teeth, he threw himself off the trail, crashing into the undergrowth. Vines slashed his face, 
thorns cut his skin, but he would not relent. If the lizardmen wanted him, they were going to have to work for their prize.